All right, in this lesson, we're going to be adding a character object into our game level. And for the first time in this lesson, we're going to be adding some code, a script file onto our game character object so that the player can control the game character object using arrow keys and the space bar on the keyboard to make the little character move in the game level forward and back and left and right with the arrow keys, as well as jump with the space bar. So in this lesson, for the first time, you're going to see a little bit of GD script, Godot's native scripting language, which allows you to code code your game as you want. Let's go ahead and jump in. The first thing we'll do is just like in the last lesson in this course, where we constructed our falling block objects as different scenes. And then we made instances of those scenes in our level one game scene is we're going to make our game character as a reusable object in a separate scene. So to do that, I'll go up to the top bar here and press this little plus. So we're making a new empty scene. And when you make a new empty scene that will be an object and not a whole game level, you never ever start that scene with one of these default options here. You're going to start the object in this scene. The root note of it is going to be the type of physical object you want that type of object to be. So I'm going to press the plus up here instead, and I'm going to find the type of node that will make a physical character object. That type of object is under node 3D, which is pretty common because we're making a 3D game. And it is under collision object, this branch here, and under the branch called physics body 3D, we're going to find the type of physics object that you can use to code movement on, and that is called a character body 3D. So if you want to search for this up top, you can just type in C-H-A-R for char, and you'll find it. It's the red one, not the blue one, character body 2D. I'll go ahead and double click on that. And that should be the first node that we've added into this scene tree, making the root node. This is my character, but of course we can't see it yet until we add another child node, a mesh instance 3D. So I'm gonna select this root node. I'm gonna press the plus to add a new node. And I'm gonna use one of my recent nodes here called mesh instance 3D, which we used a few times for the floor, as well as for the falling blocks. In the last lesson in this course, we use this mesh instance 3D a few times. You can of course search for it, but here it is mesh instance 3D. I'll go ahead and double click. When I've added a mesh instance, it does not look like anything, of course, until I select it and go over to the inspector where I can give it a new mesh resource. Of course, I can click on this little arrow here and choose the type of shape that I want this character to be. For now, we're just going to make this character a cube because a cube is easy to tell which direction it's facing, if it's turning or not. If we use something like a cylinder, well, you can't really tell if a cylinder is spinning or turning and looking left and right. So a cube is good for now. I'll select a box mesh just like that. There is the character's mesh. It's simple. If we want to see it with lighting, we can turn on our environment and our simulated temporary lighting just like that. We need to make sure that this warning goes away. So if I click on the warning, it says this node has no shape, so it can't collide or interact with other objects. Consider adding a collision shape 3D or collision polygon 3D as a child to define its shape. What it's telling us to do, of course, is to select the node again and give it another child besides the mesh. The mesh is, again, not enough to give this physical object boundaries or a collision force field, if you will. You need to select the character body 3D and add to it a collision shape 3D. You can, of course, search for it or use it from your recents if you have it listed down here. I'm going to go ahead and just double click on it in my recents to add it into my node tree here. It should be a direct child of your character body 3D, not a child of the mesh like that. That's wrong. So I'll drag it onto the character body 3D to reparent it to the character body 3D just like that. It has a warning though. If I click on the warning, it says a shape must be provided for a collision shape 3D to function. Please create a shape resource for it. What it's telling me is that I have to select that collision shape and actually tell it what shape the force field should be. So I'll go over to the shape property with the collision shape selected and I'll give the collision shape 3D a shape resource. I'm gonna use that same box shape, which will match the exact same size as the default cube size. If I go ahead and hide that mesh instance 3D by clicking on the little eyeball, you'll see that the force field, the collision shape is the same size as the box, which is exactly what we want. 
I'm going to give my character a name. My character, I can double click on the node's name. I'm going to name my character Steve. Steve with a capital S in my case. You can name your character whatever you want. I would recommend that you do not put any spaces or special characters, no dashes or dollar signs, just one word, no spaces. Make it simple. It'll make your life easier later on. Trust me on that one. If I go ahead and save now, control S, I'm saving this scene as a TSCN file and it'll auto name the same name as my root node, but in all lowercase, and that's fine. It's saving it into my project folder. I'll press save. There we go. I'm done this scene. If I go back to level one, I can add Steve into this level by selecting the root node. So your character gets added as a child of the root node and not a child of some other object in your scene. So I'll select that root node. I'm gonna press the link button and then I'll select the scene that I wanna make an instance of in level one, which is what that link button does. It's called the instantiate other scene button. I can't quite recall what it's called. Um, I'm gonna select that Steve scene and press open. And now we have an instance of Steve in the level. If I move Steve up, Maybe I'll move them over a little bit. You're going to see what happens pretty quick. Just a note before we run this game, I'm going to organize my scene tree a little bit better. I have all four of these blocks. If you added more than four, then you're going to start to have a cluttered scene tree here. What I'm going to recommend that you do is you put all of the falling blocks into a folder of sorts. If I select the root node of my scene, this root node is called a node 3D. That's the type of node that it is. And a node 3D is essentially just a container for 3D objects in your world. Well, it turns out you can use these just like a folder, which you can then collapse just like that. What we'll do here is if I select level one and press plus, I'm gonna add another node 3D. I'll just search for it up at the top, node, and then I'll select node 3D and double click. I'm gonna name this node blocks and I'll press enter. And what I can do is select all of these blocks. So I'll hold shift after I select the first one and select the last one with shift held down on my keyboard. And then I can drag all four blocks over top of this blocks folder and let go. And now we have a new little branch of this overall scene tree and I can collapse blocks and expand it to see them all. Okay, that's a little trick to keep your node scene tree organized. You can also drag items around. So if I want Steve to be on the bottom, I can just drag him right below, not onto the folder, but just below it. There we go. What happens if I save and run this? I will press control S to save. I will make sure my level one scene tab is the active tab with the blue line. That makes sure that when you press the play scene button, it actually plays this scene. And now you can see I have my little Steve character in my game level. It's off to the side so the blocks did not fall on him. That's a good thing. But I'm pressing the arrow keys and the space bar on my keyboard and nothing is happening. Why not? Because in order for you to add interactivity into your game, you need to add some code. You need to program your game. How do you do that? Well, if I go back to my Steve character, there's a little button right here. I don't want you to press it quite yet, but this button adds a script, a code file where you can do programming in GD script which you can add to any object in your game. Now we could add a script file with code onto this Steve. However, this is just one instance of Steve in this level. What I should do instead is, and this is a good habit, is go over to my original Steve scene. If you don't have that open, you can simply click on the little clapboard scene icon next to Steve to open it up again. And we're gonna select the root node of Steve in his own scene. And I'm gonna now press the add script button by clicking on it just like that, okay? This little pop-up will appear. It says attach node script. This is gonna make a new code file called steve.gd. The language is GD script. That's good, that's what we'll be using in this course. This code file is gonna be able to inherit the functionality of what Godot has built in to all character body physics objects. Character body physics objects like Steve have certain methods and variables that you can use to make them move and behave like you want. Trust me, you don't wanna change this default line. It's great, make sure it is that. If you don't have that, you clicked on the wrong thing before you pressed add script. The template we're gonna use is one that's gonna give us code for character movement without doing any work at all. We're not gonna keep this code exactly the way that it is, but if you were to add just 
an empty piece of script, you would have to code it all from scratch. We're going to start off by using the character body 3D basic movement code that Godot gives you off the bat. We're not going to change anything here. In fact, we're just going to press create. When we do that, Godot makes a script file and attaches it to that root node of Steve. You can see right here, there is a little script icon. And you can also see that we've jumped from our 3D workspace over now for the first time into our script workspace. If you're here, don't worry, you can always get back to 3D mode just like that. If you wanna see your script, you can click on Steve's little script icon or simply head yourself back over to the script workspace by clicking the button up at the top. This code file has many lines of code. We're talking about 31 lines of code, including spaces. Now, if you've never seen any code before, this is going to be very overwhelming and you're going to have no idea what's happening. That's okay. Over the next two or three lessons in this course, we're going to cover the essentials of what you need to know about programming in GDScript to be specific. And then we'll start customizing this code and making it exactly what we want to be for the behavior of our Steve character that we want. For now, all we have to do is save. I'm going to press Control S to save Steve's scene. If I go back to the 3D workspace, we now have that script file on this Steve, which now means that on level one, Steve also has the code file because when you edit in any way the original scene, all the instances of that type of object of that scene will get that same change. So now our game character inner level has that script file. If I select my level one scene tab to make it active and I press the play scene button, well, hey, you'll notice that Steve fell and landed on the ground. And if I press the up arrow key, you can see that Steve moves forward. The down arrow key makes him move back to the right and to the left. The lighting is not really good here and everything has the same default gray material on it. That's okay. Can Steve jump? Yes, Steve can jump with the space bar. Now, if your camera is not pointed in the correct direction, in little words, I have my camera here pointing on the, towards the negative Z axis direction, because if I look up here at my little axes gizmo, you can see that the little Z, which points in the positive direction, is pointing to the right, and then the blue orb, a little ball here, without a Z, is pointing to the left. That's the negative Z direction. You can see my little camera is pointing in that same negative Z direction. If your camera is not pointing that same direction, well, when you play your scene, you might press right or left and it might move your character well not in the direction on screen that you see don't worry about it we're going to address that as this course moves forward but you should be able to press all four keys and make your little character move and the space bar to jump so i'm going to leave this lesson here as it is i'm going to go back to steve's scene so you can see how i constructed my game character it's very simple and if I go back to my script file by clicking on the little icon here, you'll see all of my code right here. Almost all of it anyways. And uh, I'll leave this lesson right here. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.